Okay, our fifth principle, don't tie your self-confidence to your performance. So here's a myth that I hope to explode in this session. It, I call it the myth of self-confidence. The myth is, work hard at it and you will prove to yourself that you are a good and worthy person. Okay, that I think is a myth. I think the, the, the reality is, you will never prove to yourself that you are a good and worthy person. Rather, you have to take a leap of faith and believe that you are a good and worthy person. You have to separate your worth from your work. So however your performance is, you have to separate from that and say, I am a good person. It doesn't matter if I got asked, let's say I, I, I applied to, uh, for 20 positions and got rejected by all of them. That, that does not mean you're not a good and worthy person. It means that maybe you got to change something in your cover letter or in your CV, um, or maybe these are the wrong companies or organizations for you. But your self-worth should never be hinging on your performance. So here's another visualization around this. Um, so write down the name of someone whom you love unconditionally. Right? So I've done this in many workshops, right? So this could be this could be your mother, your father, a grandparent, a child, a friend, um, any uh, your wife or husband or boyfriend or girlfriend, someone whom you love unconditionally. So here's a question I have for you. Let's suppose that person messes up. Okay, so they don't act the way you would like them to act. Do you then stop loving them? Do you, do you love them less, actually? Because you say, well, they didn't act the way I wanted them to act? Well, if your answer is no, I still would love them the same, then I would come back to you and say, well, you should love yourself the same, even when you don't act the way you wish you would have acted. You know, just as you would still love them the same, even if, even if they don't perform the way you would have liked, you should love yourself even if you don't perform the way you would have liked. Because your self-worth should not be dependent on these, what I call the results roller coaster. You know, and we see this in many examples in business. Here's uh, Howard Schultz of uh, Starbucks saying, you know, running a public company is an emotional roller coaster. In the beginning, you accept the congratulations as if you really deserve them. Then, when the stock price falls, you feel you have failed. When it bounces back, it leaves you dizzy. At some point, you have to divorce yourself from the stock price and just focus on running the business. Again, divorce yourself from the greatness, which is how much money you're making, the stock price, and focus on just being good, just running your business the best you can. Right? So, um, I would say that those of you that have thought about someone you love unconditionally, that's the lowest your love for yourself should ever be. You know, your love for yourself has to be paramount. You have to love yourself unconditionally. Because even with all what you consider your defects, the things you're ashamed of, the things you wish you, you could do better but you don't, you got to love every piece of yourself because no one else will ever do that the same way you will. And when you love yourselves, you're not only are you able to love others, but you also instruct others on how to love you, how to care for you. Um, so this is why your self-confidence is so important. Here's an example from acting, right, from movies. Forrest Whitaker won the best Oscar for his role of, of Idi Amin in, in The Last King of Scotland. He said, 10 years into my acting career, my parents will st were still trying to get me to go back to school. I wasn't making much money, and sometimes I was really struggling. Um, and I was like, no, mom, this is what I need to do. He goes, those were difficult conversations because he didn't have the results to point to. And all he had was a lot of doubts. Um, so we all experience that. And I'm sure you've had moments where you experience that. I certainly have, where we think, you know, why aren't the results coming the way I want? And maybe there's something wrong with me. Well, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just that that's, you don't control these results. Some, it's like a roller coaster. Sometimes, you know, sometimes everybody loves you and, you know, your, your parents or say how great you are and, and your, uh, your friends want to see you. And then your parents are mad at you. Your friends don't call back. Um, then, you know, you, get an, you, you go to an interview and get the job. The next, you go to five interviews and you don't get the job. 
you get an A on a paper, you get a C, this is life. And instead of focusing on these results, you can focus on this process, this sort of continual process of how you want to act from day to day that's aligned with your vision, with your core values. That's, again, what we need to focus on. Uh, one other visual I want to give you when we talk about process versus the results is a swimmer. So let's take a look at this swimmer. So let's suppose that she's in like a, a, a one kilometer open, open water race. So if she thinks about the results and says, okay, the finish line, I have to get to the finish line, she's going to get overwhelmed and she's probably not going to perform very well. But if instead she says, let me focus on the process, and she says, okay, well, I'm going to focus on my technique. I'm going to focus on how I move my arms and my legs, the, my breathing, the rhythm, the motion of my body. Because you know what? Hey, I've been spending my whole life training for this race. I've been swimming for decades. So I'm just going to do, put in my effort and do what I've learned how to do and swim. And so what she does is every every like 30 seconds or so she lifts her head to make sure she's going in the right direction toward the finish line but that's one percent of her time 99 percent of her time she's got her head down in the water and just focusing on moving her arms and legs the technique and swimming and then she's much more likely to be the first one to the finish line so you know life is like that it's like focusing on the process rather than the results are more likely to bring those results into your life so now, the question I asked you earlier, focus on what? Well, the process, as we we're saying. So what does that mean? First, focusing on the process means discovering your unanswerable question. Okay, why would I want to focus on a question that I can't answer, right? You might be thinking. Well, every person I've ever coached that's become very successful in their lives has an unanswerable question. They have a question they are never fully going to answer that they will never stop trying to answer. So, for example, uh, a doctor. There, this, a doctor's unanswerable question might be, how can I continually improve my ability to provide the most cutting-edge health care possible to my patients? She is never going to fully answer that, but she'll never stop trying to answer it. How about a software developer? How can I make the complex ever and ever simpler to make the lives of people better. Okay, he is never going to fully answer that question, but that question will continually motivate him throughout his career. An entrepreneur, how can I create and sustain companies that continually enhance their responsiveness to the needs of customers and employees? Okay, she's never going to fully answer that question, but she'll never stop trying to answer it. We see a lot of examples of people that don't have an unanswerable question and then to get into a lot of trouble in their lives, like many celebrities, for example, where they say, okay, my goal is to, you know, make millions of dollars in the movies, or my goal is to sell five million CDs. They achieve their goal. And then what? Then it's drugs, sometimes suicide, because there's no motivation left. That's why an unanswerable question is so important. Because when you think about developing your vision, developing your, like what you really want to accomplish in your life, you know, you can come up with an unanswerable question that you'll never stop trying to answer that will always guide you. And as we saw with 90% of people, even theology students, not acting in ways that are aligned with their vision, I would say the more you can solidify your vision, the more you can make it concrete, the more likely in those moments when you don't feel like pursuing it, you'll have a reminder to come back and keep focused on that vision. So take a moment now to pause the video and write down what for you might be an unanswerable question that you could spend your life pursuing. You don't have to have the final version. Just, dra just write something. You can wordsmith it later. You can edit it later. But just to get started. I hope you have your unanswerable question now, or at least a draft of it. All right, so the process is also choosing actions that are aligned with your unanswerable question, aligned or consistent with your core values and your life vision. And finally, as we've been talking about, believing in your ability to continually advance along this path.